Hey, how's it going? Um, my name is Kahui Winiata Topi from New Zealand, and I pass a C3 church in Narawahia. And so I first come across C3 Church in 2016, uh, where after a radical conversion um, to the Lord, because I come from uh, a gang background, I'm the former uh, president of the Black Power in my region, which was the Waikato. And uh, after a radical conversion to Christ, um, you know, uh, from a life of drugs, alcohol, and violence, I. I'd, I turned to the Lord and the Lord answered me powerfully, which caused me to eventually one day walk into a C3 church. Uh, and um, what really just stood out to me in that church is just the love and the embrace um, that, you know, the people that were in there uh, gave me as soon as I walked in the door. They didn't see my tattoos. Uh, they didn't see, you know, colour. They didn't see a gangster. Um, they just saw straight past all of that and they just come up and embraced me. I think at the beginning my church really believed in me more than I believed in myself. They believed in me and my calling and, and you know, who God wanted to, me to be um, more than I believed in myself. And that really, really impacted on me uh, very powerfully because I can't count how many times um, that throughout my walk in Christ um, that I've shunned myself, I've condemned myself, I have put myself on, you know, uh, on the chopping block a lot. And we've always built this uh, um, perception in our minds, all I have anyway, that the church is a perfect place. And so when I came into the doors of C3 Church, it was like um, I felt at home because um, everybody was um, going through something and, and they were finding it inside the doors of the church. So they weren't trying to be perfect. It was actually quite the opposite. Um, they knew that they were broken. I knew I was broken and I needed to be in a place there where I could be vulnerable around people that uh, are not trying to be perfect or they can open themselves to vulnerabilities. Going back in the years, like when we first came to Sydney, down from Orange, um, and you know, I, it was a really a big step for us to come down and um, it was a faith step. And uh, you know, there were concerns, financial concerns, and just having a baby on one wage now. Um, and. Um, I was at home one night with just little little Renee and Greg was, went to church, the evening church. I think Renee was about six weeks old. And, you know, and I had all these concerns about how we're going to make it down here, you know. Um, and um, Greg came home and he'd had a word from Phil. And it was Philippians 4.19, My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. And and so that just made me feel confident that it's going to be okay. Yeah. And you know, and that's just the first step, but there are many more steps along the way where we had to believe God and really trust and, you know, um, Phil is the master and Chris at, at teaching faith. From all of the leaders that have gone before us, we have a, we've, we understand more about how faith works, and I think faith is such a distinctive in the, in the movement, and that um, cultivating a strong faith, watching people walk through battles, watch people um, walk through, you know, um, family family troubles, or watch people walk through, um, you know, a building process or uh, challenges within the church, and stay filled with vision, stay filled with faith, stay filled with um, just fire for what could happen and can happen. It's, I think it's powerful, yeah. it spurs us on. I mean, two of the greatest risks I think that we have taken personally um, in stepping out and planting C3 Edinburgh, um, man, one of them has got to be, um, I mean, the, 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 the way that we had to say our goodbye to to uh, the beautiful city that we grew up in, in Canberra, in Australia, and we, 
we love it there and we love the community there and we have our family there. Uh, we adore the place. Um, and to, to decide to he listen to God, to hear from Jesus and, and move to Edinburgh, uh, there was a risk in that, wasn't there? Because we, we sold our home and we sold uh, all of our things and we took our three young children on an aeroplane um, and moved over to Scotland, um, trusting in God that he would create a church without a team to come with us at the beginning and without, without a place to meet as a church to begin with and without, uh, without a job. Um, we came over here thinking that the job market would be fine and now know that it's only by the grace of God that jobs came when we needed them. God met us every single step of the way. There was not a moment that his provision wasn't extended to us. Sometimes scary, but... Oh, totally scary. <laughs> totally scary. In the first year of church planning, it was we went through a very tough period of time where um, a whole bunch of things locally were happening and then I lost my mum really quickly and um, she passed away in Australia and we weren't expecting it and so I had to go to Australia to be a part of that and do the funeral and everything and it's like right at Christmas time yeah, it was right at Christmas time yeah. Jess had just given birth to our son and uh, six days after that you know I was going and Pastor Josh Kelsey from C3 NYC, you know, just flew up and took care of the weekend that weekend and just what, like, I couldn't imagine not having like a brother like him just down the road willing to mm -hmm. stop everything and do whatever it takes and it's amazing, like, just to know that yeah. you can pick up the phone, there's support and there's help and, you know, I just don't know how I could do this without friends right. in the ministry, I don't, don't know how I could do this alone. The levels of faith that C3 invites you into and affirms is incredibly inspiring. Uh, I think one of the biggest risks for us was when we made the offer on this property and, and, and no bank would back us up. So we kept putting more and more and more money in until we had $850,000 on the line. Uh, on, a, on Easter, I had to phone uh, the person that owned this property and say, we can't find the money, that $850,000 is yours. And on Easter, that, that was on Friday, Good Friday, it wasn't a Good Friday. And then on Easter morning, I had to tell the church that we had put $850,000 on the line and we, we uh, will be losing that. And the next morning, this the owner of this property phoned back to me and said, that, uh, I believe in what you're doing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back that bill for you. And the, the, it was $7 million, the same price as America paid for Alaska. And so we said, um, we said, it's a deal. We shook hands on the day after the vision had died, right? It didn't resurrect Easter Sunday, but, it, but the next morning it did. And then we went on to raise more money. But, but watching as C3 has helped us um, and, and has pioneered taking land and taking risks, um, I think that we, 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 we got caught in some of the vortex of that and said, ah, if you can do it, we can do it. And we honestly felt we can do it because we've seen other C3 leaders do it. Well, we were invited to, again, the invitation that the Lord always presents before you, you don't know, so you have to trust Him. And when they asked us, of course we said yes, but well, I think one of the biggest risks was saying yes, because we had no idea what we were stepping into. Yeah, I got a phone call from Pastor Phil. I said, I better take this. He said, will you be the regional overseer? I said, sure. And then I went upstairs. I thought, I better tell my wife. <laughs> well, I just sat there. And so, and, and then, but we said, oh, of course, but here's what we're doing. We're building, a, we're building the family. We're building the movement. And if they believe we can do it, they believe that, that we're the ones, we're, we're going to do it. We're going to do what we can as long as we can. And uh, so we're, we're pleased and honored to do our part to help build the movement. So I think one of the big risks that we took was in the early days pastoring right here in Christchurch after the earthquakes. And uh, I think at the time, the climate was so uncertain, finances were so tough because people were leaving the city, but the cost of doing church had gone up. And we had a moment where we had to choose uh, whether to uh, keep you know, with faith and boldness, believing for God to do something big here in the city, or, or temper our vision and go conservative. And uh, we chose to 
uh, stick with faith and stick with boldness and believe that God was able despite what we were going through. And we're so glad that we did because we have a great C3 church here in Christchurch now. Uh, and uh, thanks be to God for that. I think it was a risk to keep doing ministry, uh, having a young family, having children, uh, but trusting God that he would see us through, he would provide uh, and care for our family. I've been unwell recently. Um, we discovered that I had a heart problem that we didn't think I had, um, which is ironic as a doctor, but I was pretty sick and had to go on tablets and have a bit of a wee minor operation. And I really struggled with God with that. Um, I expected instant healing and instant answers and actually having the church family around was really great. I don't think I would have coped without them. Um, and being able to petition with them and, and trial through God with it. Um, I think just being able to really, really lean into that. Sometimes the answers are yes, and sometimes the answers are no, and sometimes, maybe most of the time, the answers are not right now. Bula, uh, my name is Makiti Raratam. Uh, I'm married and we have five beautiful children. Uh, we are the assistant pastors of C3 Lotoka. You know, we as children of God, we are not um, excluded from the hardships of life. Eh? Uh, there are moments that we really have to dig deep um, in what we have, what we've been taught in church. And um, I think it's just the, the reassurance and the understanding that you know that you serve a God that loves you so much. Uh, he knows what you're going through. Difficult times, difficult moments will come, but otherwise you have to be, to understand that you have a God, a Father who loves you so much, and um, He's gonna get you out of the situation if you trust Him completely. Life's always gonna throw disappointments at you. You know, it doesn't matter who you are. Um, as we go along in life, there's going to be disappointments. Um, and it um, really depends on, and it's up to us, how we handle those disappointments. But yet the trick is just don't get stuck in it. You know, don't get stuck in that disappointment um, because the other side of that isn't pretty. At the same time too, I think in those challenging disappointments or times of disappointments, is that you go to God. That's and right. I think. God. You've got to really look for God. He's, he is that place. He's got to be that stronghold. He's got to be that position of, and, uh, of power. And, and everything, I think everyone has to I, learn how to find where is my God space? Where is my God place? Yeah. And be able to go there because that's where your faith is. That's where your strength is. I am so at peace with my walk with God now. Um, it's been such an amazing experience for me being part of this church that I'm part of a bigger family um, and that I have a lot to look forward to and I really am excited about um, being part of the next journey that God takes me through, um, the growth of C3 because it really has made such a difference in my life. Um, my relationship with Jesus is really uh a very um, close one and um, I considering how far he has brought me um, away from my previous life um, it makes me want to uh, press into him more and more each day. God has shown me um, things that I never ever thought that I would have been able to see in my whole entire previous life. In terms of my dreams, my dreams have gone broader now and the horizon just seems so much bigger now that I um, that I just could never have imagined it uh, beforehand.